if you need to, if you need to tell yourself, this is a Zillow lead and lie to yourself to put yourself in the mindset to call that person to pretend like it's a warm lead when really all the leads are the same, then do it. Now, now let's take it a step further because that's a penny. I don't have a penny. I get that. Oh, we have a follow-up question, sir. So this question is for Ricky. Um, hey, I'm so excited to, to hear you. I've learned so much since I've been here. Um, but I know you talk about um, you know, the different uh, things that you do to make calls and things like that. Um, how do you feel about online, um, like Zillow, Realtor.com, people that pay for those leads? Because I spend like a crap ton of money on leads and I'm, I want to get away from that. Um, but I still need to figure out a way to continue to get mm -hmm. business. I mean, I, I think I rely a lot on Zillow and Realtor.com. And I think I do a pretty good job at converting, mm -hmm. but it is a lot of money, and I feel that I can be doing something else with that money besides spending it on that. So, what would you suggest or recommend? How, for that? What do you? How much do you spend on leads? Ooh, how much good. do you? How much do you spend on one lead? On one lead? Yeah, one lead. I don't know. I haven't even. Well, that's a problem right there, right? You don't even know what you're spending. Awareness. That's that that that's problem number one, right? Um. But secondly, when, when you get these leads, right, you got to call them, right? Yeah. Now, these leads are, you're at the mercy of what leads Zillow and Realtor.com want to give you at that mm -hmm. point, right? So they could be, they're just random leads. You have no control over who the, who the person is, okay? Um, furthermore, uh, these leads are, yeah, they're random, and you still got to call them, right? Mm -hmm. And they're people in the market. Okay, mm -hmm. they're just people that more than likely live in the market, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll get some relocation leads, not talking about those, but most of them are going to be pe probably people that live around there, I would think, right? Unless you're in a place where a lot of people are coming in, like if they're coming from California to Florida or something like that. Yeah. But generally speaking, in a regular market, local, local okay? Yeah. And you're paying a, a number that's embarrassing to say. Yes. Okay. You know what it is. You just don't want to say it. <laughs> So what, I, what I'm saying is, is why would you spend hundreds and even thousands of dollars on one random lead when you could spend a penny on the exact property owner that you want to do business with and have the exact conversation? How many, how many of you think, what, what's the percentage of property owners? You could use this. I, I'm not going to tell you to use this, but just think about this for a second, this concept. How many property, what's the percentage of property owners that have been on Realtor.com, Zillow, any of these syndicated websites in the last six to eight months and, and look and looked at property in any kind of capacity, whether they're interested or not? How many, what percentage of property owners, I'll take, a, I'll take the answer from anybody, have, what's that? 80, 100, right? Got to be somewhere close to 100, right? So every single property owner that you could get for a penny and you can call them and say, hey, I'm so-and-so at whatever real estate company. Hey, doing today? Cool, me too. I'm enjoying the days in the gorgeous. Listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I saw you were looking at some property online. I was just going to follow up with that and see if there's anything in the world I could do to help you. Chances are, you guys just said 100% that they have been looking online at property. So why couldn't you get the same lead, not the same, not random, but the exact person for a penny? I'm, I'm going to take it a step further in a second, but the exact, per, the exact person you want to do business with for a penny and have the exact same conversation. If you, need to, if you need to tell yourself this is a Zillow lead and lie to yourself to put yourself in the mindset to call that person to pretend like it's a warm lead when really all the leads are the same, then do it. Now, now let's take it a step further because that's a penny. I don't have a penny. I get that. For sale by owners are for free. Doing open houses are free. Knocking on doors are free. And these are all the same people that you're getting on Zillow, Realtor, and all these places spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on. It's the same people. But you're too scared to call a cold person, not even realizing that it's the same person. You know, Realtors paid for 200 million leads in 2021. 200 million. And there were 6 million transactions. Think about it for a second. Why are we buying all these leads that aren't doing nothing? 
And it's the same. They're selling you the same. They're selling you the same contact information that you can get for a penny and have the same conversation if you really wanted to. But also, to take it a step further, you could do all this for free. Social media is free. Oh, for sale by owners are free. Uh, Shane is in the audience. He has 40 listings right now, all for sale by owner, nine under contract, all for sale by owner. For sale by owner is, is, is good. I, I don't, I hate for sale by owners, but not right now. The market's tight. The market's tight. They've raised their hand and said, I'll sell. And I don't have an agent. That's a free lead. Free. Knock on doors social media, open houses, free, 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 free. There ain't no excuses. You can strap boot, you can bootstrap your business and build your business for zero. All the way to the end of your career, zero. You don't have to spend a dollar on your business forever. As a new agent, if you guys were to go back and start over, what would be the number one thing for the bit of advice that you would give to people? If, if, I, if I were brand new, had to start over today. All right. I'd, uh, I got, there's this website. Okay. Write this one down. Z-E-R-O-T-O. -O. Um. Listen, being a new agent is super tough, right? 90% of agents fail, right? Out of the ones that don't fail, 20% uh, make six figure or more. It is extremely competitive, extremely tough. I would say the best advice I can give you to kind of help you through this, how long have you been in business? <clears throat> I am officially licensed today, sir. Okay, give it up for me. <laughs> You trying to tell a new agent how to build their business is basically like talking Chinese to them. Okay. Um, the best advice I can give you is that every single agent goes through the same process as a new agent. Okay. You come in high on life, excited about this new opportunity. After a couple of weeks, you become a little frustrated because you realize there's a mountain of knowledge you're not going to learn in a day. And then after a few months of not of busting your ass and not selling anything or even coming close, you become extremely disappointed. And so you start out high and then you have this really high high and then you have this really low low. And a lot of agents can't make it past that point. They quit. But the future top producers take a step back and say, oh, OK, this is harder than I thought it was. But look, Ricky's doing it. Steph's doing it. He's doing it. She's doing it. All these other people are doing it. I know I can do it. OK, it's harder than I thought but I know I can do this. And then you get back up and guess what? You go on another high and then you go through another low again. But you're, but this high isn't as high as the first high and this low isn't as low as the last low. And so it starts out at a very steep roller coaster of emotions. But then you have a couple of these and it takes about a year or two to get to where you kind of level that out and you don't get so excited about certain opportunities because you know you could get disappointed by a, a seller choosing another agent or a buyer falling through or whatever. And you don't get extremely excited. You don't get extremely disappointed. You stay pretty level. And that's what the future top producers and what really great agents uh, do really well is they, they're able to check their emotions at the door and really handle those ups and downs like a champ where it doesn't just take them out either way. And I think that's really important to realize this emotional roller coaster that you're about to go through and how hard this really is. Because a lot of agents say, oh, I know it's going to be hard. No, you don't. You think you do. Multiply times what you, what, what you, how hard you think it is now. Okay, multiply that times 20. And that's how hard it's actually going to be in real life, right? So be in it for the long haul. It's not about the X's and O's of this is what I would do every day. You can learn that anywhere. Stay busy talking to people. Try to help people buy and sell real estate. Put them in your database. Send emails. Do social media. That's easy stuff. The hard part is dealing with the emotional ups and downs and getting to a place where you have consistent business and you're just in for this long journey. And there's nothing I can tell you right now that's going to magically put you in this, you know, place where you're, you're, you know, you're going to be on your way, right? Good luck.
All right, hello, hello. This one is for Ricky. Shout out to GOAT. So I just started doing the weekly email. I'm actually gonna send my first one out tomorrow. I just had a question. How did you decide to send yours out Wednesday? And do you think it's a certain day and time that's best that gets the most opens? Doesn't matter. It's kind of like making calls. Doesn't matter when you do it. For sure, for sure. And then so for circle prospecting. So I do it three hours a day, trying to make in between 100 to 300 for real? calls. Yeah, when do you my have best. time to bench press all that much? <laughs> 5 a.m. <laughs> Every morning, that's, that's Jared. <laughs> but so when you're prospecting, how many calls do you aim for and how many attempts do you uh, aim for? I don't, day? I don't. You go for when the time? I'm when I'm calling, I just want to call for the amount of time I allotted and, and, and committed to calling. So if it's a three hour or two hour, whatever it was, and I decided I want to call for two hours, I don't care how many calls I make or how many dials or how many contacts. I can't control that. I can't control if I talk to three people that want to talk for 30 minutes this day and then nobody answers the next day. And then I talk to a million people the next day for three minutes a piece on average. I don't know how the call sessions are going to go. You're going to have good call sessions, bad call sessions, people that want to talk, people that don't want to talk. People are just mean all day and people are happy. All You're going to run into all kinds of stuff. So just stick to the hours you time blocked to call, ignoring everything else until that time's up. Like if you were showing property, and you're in front of your buyer, you're walking through a house and a fire is calling, you know, one of those fire situations that everybody thinks that they can't let go for a couple hours, like an inspection repair addendum or a buyer that wants to possibly write an offer or something, right? And you're in front of your buyer and you see him on the caller ID. Are you going to answer it? Yeah. You're going to answer it, right? You're right in front of your buyer. You're showing a house to. You're going to answer oh, your phone no. in front of your client that you're showing a no, house no. to. <laughs> no, you're no. not. No, you're not. You're, you're probably not even going to look at your phone, right? So if so, why can we ignore the stuff when we're doing certain tasks, but but we feel like those tasks are going to get in the way when we're when we're doing these other tasks like making calls. You got to get pretend in your mind that when you're making calls, it's the same. It should be at the same level that you're showing property. This is a do not disturb period of time that you have to take advantage of to build your business. Because you're building a business for 2030. Yep. The seeds that you're planting are going to come to fruition most likely in a couple of years. You'll get a couple here and there. And that's what's going to create that 2023 volume. But the majority aren't going to blossom for years from now, right? But you got to keep the consistency up. That's what creates a snowball. Think about this. Every call session you miss pushes your dreams out another six months. Yep. If it's going to take you five years to get there and you miss a call session, now you're five months, six months out. Miss another call session, now you're six years out. That's good. And Go so, ahead, bro. Um, I'm 18. I became a licensed agent like a month or two ago. And I feel like I struggle with trying to, uh, I guess, socialize and trying to break my bubble a yep. little bit. So for any of you guys that can answer, how can I um do better with that at least everybody goes through the same thing man so the fact that you feel this way you should feel like yes i'm on the right path right and um secondly is, is nothing's gonna just just flip it's gonna be something that happens gradually over time and it's gonna be based on how much consistent action you put in to talk to people and to put yourself in those situations. That's all it is. It's really that simple. The problem is it takes a long time. And that's the part people can't stomach. You know, they, they go and they feel like they're not getting to the next level with the communication. So they kind of say, oh, I'm not getting anywhere and they give up, but they don't realize how far they've come. Why? Because you're looking in the same mirror every day. If you, if you take somebody and you, if you film your first call, and then eight months later, you feel like you hadn't got anywhere, but you film that call in eight months and you compare the two, you're going to be like, wow, this is a bit, this is a whole different person. People don't real, people underestimate what they can do in the long term and they, they overestimate what they can do in the short term. So just think really long term and just continue to force yourself into those situations because real estate is predicated on you talking to people you don't know to help them buy and sell real estate. And building those relationships and turning those people you don't know into people that you do know. That's the whole business right there in a nutshell. And so just realize that and understand that the only thing between you and a million bucks a year are thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your market. Either you're going to have it or an ISA is going to have it or somebody's having a conversation with somebody 
for business to happen. I want so go out there and have those thousands of conversations as quick as you can so you can get to that million dollars. Look. I-35 with the top down, quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Seem like everybody want to be 